I feel like something bad is going to happen to me. I feel like something bad has happened. It hasn't reached me yet, but it's on its way. This dialogue sets the tone for Lake Mongo, which I consider to be one of the purest, most profound and macabre pieces of horror cinema I've ever experienced. Premiering 10 years ago, this Australian documentary takes you on an intimate journey through the lives of the Palmer family after the sudden death of their daughter Alice in December 2005. It recounts the events leading up to Alice's tragic demise through talking head interviews with family, friends and associates who each give deeply personal, insightful and increasingly revealing recollections of their experiences with Alice as they try to comprehend and cope with such a life-changing event. For as subtle as it is, it isn't an easy watch. It's an uncompromising and unsettling portrait of death that emotionally disembowels you as events take a dark and sinister turn. At the same time, it doesn't surrender itself to typical horror conventions. It should be clear that this film, first and foremost, is a documentary that aims to tell a genuinely complex tale that spirals down a rabbit hole of harrowing concepts and ideas. I will eventually warn you when we go into spoilers, but for now I simply want to sell you on what I think is the saddest horror movie you've probably never seen. And before we go any further, I should clarify that this documentary is entirely fictional. But god damn does it convince you otherwise. Let's talk about it. I think what's interesting about discussing Lake Mongo now is that in an age where Netflix literally produced documentaries that are practically identical to the style and tone of this film, it makes the story all the more powerful. If you have no clue this is fictional, it's very difficult to tell it apart from any other documentary with an overly suggestive or sensationalist delivery. The artifice typically associated with mockumentaries and found footage films is impossible to distinguish because Lake Mongo remains extremely low-key and meticulously constructed in how it pushes towards a more supernatural edge. Writer-director Joel Anderson didn't just rely on unknown actors to create authenticity like other fine footage movies. Instead, he only gave the actors an outline for the story and interviewed them like real people to capture raw, improvised responses that made for a much more thoughtful and humanized narrative. The family are just ordinary, everyday people. They don't have distinct dynamic personalities or quirks to identify them. They simply feel real and relatable, a component that is essential to connecting with the story. The way the film handles grief is more unique than most horror films that use such a common trope. It never perpetuates sadness, but rather this empty, depressive, enigmatic state that's reinforced by the supernatural elements. Throughout the film, Alice's brother begins to notice her ghost allegedly appearing in photos and footage, but it's always presented as dubious. It's entirely up to you as the viewer whether you take on the perspective of a skeptic thinking the whole thing is a publicity hoax or believe the family is in fact being haunted. None of them believe in ghosts, but as time goes on, the family, especially the son, begin to show strange behaviour and share convincing stories of having seen Alice's presence linger around the house. Since they're so broken and lost, it's extremely unclear whether it's a genuine supernatural experience or one comprised of them trying to cope with their painful loss by manifesting Alice's memories into their lives. If these images are incredibly difficult to see, that's because it's entirely deliberate. Lake Mongo plays on the psychological phenomenon of pareidolia, where the mind perceives patterns in conventional objects that resemble the likes of faces, for example. On the one hand, it's there to maintain plausibility and ambiguity over the state of the family, but on the other, it serves a very heartfelt thematic purpose. Lake Mongo essentially plays on the unfinished business of ghost stories, where instead of the ghosts remaining for negative or evil circumstances, Alice's ghost exists to help the family overcome a lack of closure. Put it this way, we get so distracted and consumed by our own personal lives that we neglect to openly show our loved ones that we really do care and love them. But with death being so unforgivable and unpredictable, sometimes it's too late to resolve a matter we've 
always wanted to. From my experience, that unending guilt hurts because we aren't granted second chances to say the things we want, especially when it comes to love and appreciation, but in Lake Mongo, the Palmer family are fortunately granted that alluring second chance. While the father admits he's able to put certain parts of his past behind him because he was the one who had to identify his own daughter's grotesque bloated corpse and immediately come to terms with that reality, even though he tries to hide his pain through work, it's the mother June who lives with the guilt of never having a better relationship with Alice before she died. Like many families, the Palmers were never the most openly loving to each other. Love was usually more internalised and never fully recognised, and before Alice's mother had a chance to express that love, Alice was gone. It becomes clear that June and Alice had a turbulent relationship and there's a wound left unhealed. June's mother says it's an inherent emotional detachment that existed long in her family that was passed on to June, who passed it on to Alice, and the real heart-crushing revelation for June is that she'll never know if Alice knew that she loved her. This is where we get into major spoiler territory. This film has several significant twists that will have an effect on some people's enjoyment watching the film. At first, it introduces this very real, tragic, harrowing event, then switches to a bone-chilling supernatural discovery, and then, well, this happens. I explained to Dad that I was responsible for the image of Alice in the hallway uh, and the bedroom, and that I created the April 28th backyard photo and the sales image. It's revealed that the son fakes the supernatural imagery. His personal reasoning is to encourage his father to have Alice's body exhumed to give his mother closure for choosing not to identify the body with his dad. Yet what becomes even more shocking is that when June decides to check the footage again, she notices something else that nobody knew about. And it's not a ghost. It was while I was looking at Matthew's June 13 hallway material again that I noticed something in the image. There was a second figure, not Matthew in the hallway, but someone else squatting in the dark in Alice's room. At first I thought it was Alice. Then I realised it was our neighbour. Yeah, so we're not even at the scariest part when it's discovered that Alice had a sexual encounter with the Palmer's neighbours she was babysitting for. And before the neighbours disappear and the act is claimed as consensual, the neighbours try to steal the evidence. Except what it leads to is another revelation when June explores Alice's private possessions. Bear in mind at this point, I've not talked about Alice's character at all. And there's a reason for it. While it might seem anticlimactic, it becomes clear that nobody really knew who Alice was. Since everyone was so focused on their own grief, none of them ever stopped to properly consider their relationship with Alice, calling upon the notion of can you ever truly know someone. It suggested that she was persistently depressed and troubled by something. In fact, she even saw the same medium the family used to speak to Alice's ghost to make sense of her strange feelings, but the point is, much like June's inability to share her feelings with Alice, knowing who Alice really was can only be answered by her. There's now a mystery attached to her character, and if you're still with me, let me recap all the plot twists before we go any further. Alice's ghost haunts the family, it's actually a hoax devised by the son, it's revealed Alice had a sexual encounter with the neighbours, then it's revealed we literally know nothing about Alice, so what other crazy twists can the film throw at us? Seriously, brace yourself. The family discover Alice buried something at Lake Mongo, so they go in search of it, discovering her phone with a video that calls back to the very opening. And it leads to one of the most existentially terrifying encounters I've ever seen in fiction. What appeared to loom over Alice's final weeks was the premonition of her death. Alice sees her own bloated, lifeless corpse. Just take that thought and run with it, seeing your own dead self. 
the tragic horror is further compounded by what her mother says. Alice was fully aware that she was going to die, and what she did at Lake Mongo was bury items that were symbolically personal to her in a sort of pre-funeral. While the father believes otherwise, that's part of the uncertainty of the film. Nobody knows, but the idea manifests and lingers on. One day, we all face our mortality, and that's something that nobody can comprehend. Just the very ability to consider our death is a scary thought in itself, something firmly brought to life in Lake Mongo. But at the same time, it leaves the family with some form of clarity. Once they get home, they believe everything felt more at ease, that they felt ready to finally move on. In some way, the pain had brought them closer together and allowed them to make peace with tragedy. Sure, it won't bring Alice back or physically change anything, but at least they saw their uncertainty through to the next stage in their own lives that they now better share together. And even if Alice isn't with them in life, she's with them in death characterized by the image now becoming manifested into family videos and photos, with the final image of the film being a return to Matthew's original photograph, where the real ghost of Alice stands staring, watching over them in peace. Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think is the saddest horror movie you've ever seen. I also want to give a big shout out to everyone for those uh, very kind, heartwarming comments you've been sending me. I have been sick for the last couple of weeks. I am feeling so much better now, so uh, thank you for that. Um, if you enjoy what I do here and you want to get early access, even get your name in the credits, uh, you can do so uh, by heading over to Patreon and supporting me there. That's what helps uh, me to keep making these uh, videos. And until next time, uh, stay safe, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.